Welcome to A Time in the Word. My name is Pastor Chris Sakai. It's so good to be with you today. We're going to take a few minutes and go through Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And if you can catch what I'm going to be teaching you uh, today, it will transform your Christianity. God wants you to live a life free from sin, walking in victory, walking in faith. Uh, he doesn't want you uh, bound up by depression or guilt or shame or fear. There is freedom in Christ. And you might say, how do I grasp that? You know, I believe in Jesus, but I can't seem to live that way. If you can just connect and, and catch his revelation on what I want to share with you today, it's going to transform your life. So get your Bibles, open up to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And while you're doing that, I just want to welcome everyone who is listening on our radio station, 90.1 FM and 104.9 FM, The Point. So glad you're with us and everyone watching on our YouTube and Facebook platforms. Hey, greetings. So let me read uh, the first couple verses and then we're going to chat about this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you... He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who is now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. And so the Apostle Paul is writing here to the church of Ephesus and saying, listen, you were once dead in your trespasses and sin, but now you have been made alive. Now, I want to share with you the difference between the way most people think about Christianity and true biblical Christianity. Most people believe that what God did is took me from a bad person and made me into a good person. And this is why some people who, you know, are good people who are genuinely kind and do good things, they struggle sometimes with becoming born again because they don't see themselves as sinners. They don't see themselves in need of salvation. But the Bible does not teach us that we go from a bad person and become a good person. What the Bible teaches is that, is that we were once dead people, and now we are fully alive. This is why Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, that we must be born again. Meaning that in our flesh, in this body, we were born, you know, whenever you're born from your mom. You know, but our spirit man, because of sin, was dead. It would have no connection with God. It was completely separated because of the sin nature that was inside of us. But when we make Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, the Bible says we pass from death to life. So we were once, we were once dead people dead in our sin, and we couldn't help but to be a certain way because we were trapped by that nature. But now we are fully alive. We are born again. Our flesh was born the first time. Now our spirit becomes born the second time. And the Bible teaches us that our spirit then becomes the temple or the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Meaning that when you become born again, the Holy Spirit himself dwells inside of you. 2 Corinthians 5.17, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Meaning that we were one way, but that old man is dead and buried, and now we're a new person in Christ. Now, we might say, well, okay, I get that in theory. I hear what the Word of God says, but, but how do I apply that? How do I uh, transform my life? Well, we got to first, let's just break down the, the bad here first. It says that we were dead in our trespasses in which you, this is the word, if you got a Bible, circle it in verse 2. It says, once walked according to the course of this world. So when God sees you, he doesn't see you as a person who is walking in sin any longer. You might say, well, that's how I see myself. But that's not how God sees you. And I want you to understand the why. is because 
Time exists inside of God. He is eternal. He sees your beginning and your end all at the same time. And so when God sees you, he doesn't see what you're struggling in right now. He identifies you. He calls you by the final product. He sees who he has called you to be. And so he says, you were once dead in sin. You once walked according to this world. But that's not how God sees you. Now, the reason that people struggle and the reason they stay, you know, um, bound up as sons of disobedience, you know, the reason, the reason they struggle with that is because they still identify as a sinner. The Bible tells us that when you are born again, you are no longer a sinner. You are now a saint of God who is saved by grace. And the reason that we struggle is because we don't see ourselves that way. We don't identify that way. We don't live as a person who is walking free from sin. We're still in this mindset here. It says, you know, that we are still behaving as by our old nature as children of, of wrath. You know, we're still walking uh, according to the lust of our flesh and the lust of our mind. But the Bible says, don't identify yourself that anymore. Put on the mind of Christ. Believe in your heart that God is who you say who he says you are. Now, I've talked about this in church before, but let me just share it with you here online. That when you have a child and you speak to your child and say, you tell your child, man, you're so stupid. You're such an idiot. You know, you're never going to amount to anything. You're such a loser. Why did you do that? I don't know why I even had you. And when you speak these words of death upon your children, they will end up becoming that person that you're speaking into them. They will take that and it'll take root in their heart and their behavior and their nature will be what you spoke into them. But if you speak words of life that you tell your children that they are wonderful, you tell them they are brave, you tell them they are kind, you tell them they are forgiving, you tell them they are merciful, you tell them who they are. You speak words of life inside of them. They're smart. You tell them these things. They will rise to who you tell them that they are. And so for us as children of God, the Lord is speaking to us through his word. And he's saying that, hey, you are no longer dead to sin. You are no longer bound to addiction. You no longer have to live according to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the mind. He says, you don't have to be bound by the pride of life anymore. He says, I have called you different. I have said you are a son, a daughter in Christ, that you are an heir and a co-heir. You are more than a conqueror. He says, you have the victory inside of me. When we begin to believe, and this is the key word, when we begin to believe who we are in Christ, then our behavior will begin to change will begin to walk in obedience. You know, the Bible tells, God told us in the Bible, be holy as I am holy. He is calling us to a place of holiness. Now, many of us hear that in a negative sense or in a legalistic sense where we think, well, I've got to earn my way into God's good graces. Or if I do this thing, God will accept me. Or you think, I can never do that, so God's never going to accept me. But that's not what it is. That's not God's heart. It's a sweet invitation. God is holy and he is inviting you. He's saying, be holy as I am holy. He is inviting you to, and to be in his presence. He is inviting you to be like him. He says, I have defeated death, hell, and the grave. And I am now re-identifying you. We live in a world that has gotten so perverted and so caught up with, with twisted identity issues. <clears throat> and in the spirit realm, it's no different. The enemy wants you to be identified as a sinner. He wants you to be identified as an addict. He wants you to be identified as defeated, as depressed, as anxiety, as fearful. He wants to identify you that way. But God identifies you as a son, as a daughter, as free. He identifies you in Christ. And so verse 4, it says here, But God who is rich in mercy... Man, I love that. It's not just that he's merciful, my friends. It says he is rich in mercy. He has so much mercy. It doesn't matter what you've done, 
what your past looks like, how you view yourself. The Bible says he is rich with so much mercy and he wants to pour it out in you. It says, why is he rich in mercy? Because of his great love with which he loved us. He has a great love, so much love. We can't even begin to comprehend it. And it, he says here, he has chosen to love you with that great love and to shower you with the riches of his mercy. Isn't that awesome? I mean, that that's good news uh, here. And I just, I love this. And then he goes on in verse 5 and he says, Even when we were dead in sin, excuse me, when we were dead in trespasses. So even when you were dead in trespasses, before you even had a thought about God, before you even, there was ever a transformation in your life, it says here that even when you were dead in trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. It's because of the grace of God. By his grace you are saved, not because of your works, not because of anything you can do. It's all him. It's all his grace. But here, don't miss this one part here, and I love this. It says, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So he made you and I alive in Christ before we even had a thought about him. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's not that we're asking God to do something in us. We're asking God to forgive us. We're asking God to change us. Don't pray that way. Why is that? Because he's already done it. He says, while you were dead in your sins, he made you alive in Christ. In the spirit realm, you are already alive in Christ. In the spirit realm, he has already transformed you. In the spirit realm, you are already changed and made holy. You've rec you know, he has the robe of righteousness right there for you. But our life won't change unless we believe. The way that we step into this, partner with God in what he has already done, is we have to believe. When Jesus hung on the cross, you know the famous line he says, before he died, he says, it is finished. This was a transactional phrase in Aramaic, that meant paid in full. It was like a receipt that was given, paid in full. You don't owe anything else. When Jesus died on the cross, all of your sin, everything was paid in full. It was already done. Jesus did it all. But in order for us to benefit from it, in order for there to be a change, we have to believe it. And the way we activate that belief is through our confession. We confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives. And that's to be born again. But how do we walk as, after, after we are born again? How do we walk in this newness of life? How do we walk in victory? Again, it's with our confession. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so it's, it's, it's normal, you know, to get worry and doubt and fear in our brain. But we can't let it take root in our heart. How does it take root in our heart? By when we start speaking it. Don't speak that you're a loser. Don't speak that I'm depressed. Don't speak that you have anxiety. Don't speak fear. Speak the word of God. Say what God says about you, that you are free, that you are victorious. What if they say, I don't, Pastor, I don't feel it. It doesn't matter what you feel. Your feelings are deceiving you. Speak the word of God. This is your Bible medicine. Hear what I'm saying. As you continually confess the word of God over yourself, you keep saying it again. You keep praising and rejoicing him. Your feelings will catch up with your faith. God has called us to walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith, not by feelings. Walk by faith, not by circumstances. So I want to challenge you and remind you today that you have been made alive in Christ. You have the victory, but you have to choose whether or not you are going to believe it and you're going to walk in it. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to do that right now. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to the earth to die on the cross to forgive me of my sins. Father, I love you. I praise you and I give you glory. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, you know, the Bible, and you mentioned the Bible says that you are in the family of God because you repented. You've turned from death unto life. And I want to encourage you to be, become part of a good uh, Bible believing, faith teaching church. And if you live in the spirit, if you, live, <laughs> if you live in the Winchester or Frederick City area, I want to challenge you to come to Spirit and Word Fellowship in Stephen City, Virginia. Uh, we're at 1275 Tasker Road. And we would just love for you to have to join us on Sundays at 1030. And for those of you who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, I want to give you an opportunity to sow into this ministry to help us to extend our reach. Uh, we want to get on more radio stations, uh, develop a podcast, and just continue to spread the gospel uh, through media ministry. Uh, you can also help us to feed international kids. We feed hundreds of kids uh, every single day, and we would love for you to partner with us. Also, through our Hope and Action ministry, we feed local families uh, here in the Frederick County and Winchester area. And so if you would like to partner with us, uh, you can go to 517ministries.org slash give. Um, you can also write a check and make it out to 517 Ministries at P.O. Box uh, 218, Stephen City, Virginia, 226. Five, five. And we just appreciate you partnering with us, becoming a ministry partner or a corporate partner. Uh, we just appreciate you partnering with this ministry and helping us to get the gospel message out. Hey, we love you guys. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.